Hello and welcome to the Django admin series. This is the introduction tutorial where we just go through the basics of starting a new Django project that we utilize along the timeline of this admin series. And then we'll just go ahead and access or take you through the steps to access the Django admin. Once we've done that, the final step, we'll just go ahead and have a look at some of the renaming or overrides that we can do with the Django admin. So we can start to tailor or customize the admin to your needs. So let's go ahead and build a new project. So I'm gonna type in PY or Python, and then I'm gonna start a virtual environment. So that create a new folder. And then once I've done that, I can then obviously go into that folder. And then I can just activate the virtual environment. So from here, I can pip now install Django. So now we have Django installed. So we can now use the Django admin to start a project. We're going to call this core with a DOS at the end. So it creates um, within this folder and not in, within a new folder. So here we go, we now have core and the manage pi file. So now we can use manage pi, uh, sorry, um, we can use the uh, manage yeah, pi file uh, to start a new app. So start app, and we're gonna create two apps, one called blog, and then the other app we're going to call bookstore. So the first thing we're going to do, is just go into the core, our main application, go into settings, Let's just go ahead and just make sure that we add those two applications so that we can access them within our application. And then finally, let's just, just, let's just make sure that we can run this. So run server. So that should start the new server. That seems to be working okay. And there we go. So if we navigate to 127001, the loopback address, and then port 8000, that will open up our Django application that we've just made. So we can, of course, change some of these settings. Um, so run server, and then we can define maybe the IP address we want to run it on. But obviously, most of the time, we're going to be just running this on the loopback address because we're working in this development environment. But of course, you can go ahead and maybe change the uh, port numbers if you want to. So now we're using 8080. So that would just mean us changing the port number here. Right, so that's the application started. So let's now start thinking about accessing the admin. So there's two steps here that we need to complete. First of all, we need to create a an admin so we can actually enter or log into the admin area. And then to access the admin area, you can see here that we're just gonna add a slash and then admin, that's the default area for our admin. Or should I say that's the default URL for our admin. So now you can go ahead and just stop the server, press Control and C, and I've typed in CLS just to clear that. So once we've got that up and running, we can now create, like I said, a super user. So before we do that, there isn't actually any database here for us to apply that. So you can see that there is a, uh, database here, I can right click and open this database. So I've got an application that allows me to do that. Um, so I'm running, I've got here, I'm using SQLite that allows me to kind of access these SQLite databases. So if I just run that and select, quick show again, the open the database that appear down here. And you can see that if I were to uh, open this database, there's nothing inside of it at the moment. So we have to actually run an initial migrate. So by running migrate, what we're doing is behind the scenes, Django is going to look for anything that requires a database. Now what is happening here, for example, in the settings, notice that we registered our applications. So normally what happens is that we would create an application and then we go inside of here and make some models for our database. And then when we run the migrate or the make migrations command, Django will look at these installed apps and then follow these installed apps to, in this case, the models, and then run the models if they haven't already been made. So it's the same that applies here. And what you'll see here is we have this Django Contrib admin. And essentially what's happening here is that this app here is connected to an 
external, sorry, an internal J Django um, application that's already been pre-created. So the Django admin. And then what's connected to this is obviously some models, some, some tables that need to be created in order for us to actually make some users and then actually sign into the Django admin. So let's go ahead and just migrate. You can see that we've created a number of different tables here. So now when we refresh this, our database, you can see we've got a number of different tables now, and one of them being the auth users. So we can look inside of here, you can see that um, the username, last name, email, is staff, is active. Um, so there's a number of different items here within this auth user. We also have authentication permissions and groups, etc. but uh, that's not necessarily important at this point. So now we've done the migrate, we can now run the create super user. So this will ask us a few different questions. Um, we can leave it blank if we want to use our default name. Um, so I'm just going to create a new user called admin. I don't need to actually apply an email address. That's not a mandatory field. So I just press enter and then password admin and then admin again. And then because it's too similar, etc., it's just going to ask me whether I want to use that. Of course, it's not a safe way of creating username and password if I'm going to use this in a, a development environment. Or well, sorry, if I'm going to use this live. Um, but while I'm developing, that's going to be absolutely fine. So I press Y and now we have our admin user created. So now we can just go ahead and then just run the server again. Uh, let's go back to the browser. So if you remember from the slide, we need to type in slash admin. So let's go back and do that. So we just need to rename these ports again, because we're using 8,000. There we go. So now we need to type in slash admin. So where that is generated from the slash admin, if you go back into the project, just close that down. If you go into the core application in your URLs, so by default, Django has already added the URL for the admin area. So that's just uh, admin slash. So let's just go back here. Now we can just type in admin and admin and we are able to log in. So that really is the basics of accessing your Django admin area. So let's have a look at some of the initial uh, customizations that you might want to make in your admin. So these are three different options that we can change. So let's have a look at some of these. So you can see we're going to change just the, the title and the headers of our admin area. So if we go back and just log out, um, let's go back to our home. OK, so maybe you want to just change this, uh, the uh, Django administration, um, for example. Uh, when we log in, maybe we want to just change where it says site administration. Uh, maybe we want to change um, the actual tab name as well. So these are just some kind of basic changes that you might want to make in your application. So to perform these actions here, uh, let's just go, let's just uh, start by having a look at the admin site index. So where we need to place these in actual fact is in your core application your main Django application folder. And then inside of your URLs, you can just place these just underneath the, the URLs. So let's just add this. So this is going to be called uh, the bookstore. So this is the uh, index title. So let's go ahead and refresh. And you can now see at the top here, it says uh, the bookstore um, up here. So you can see that we've changed uh, the tab. And in addition to that, you can now see the new name that has been updated. So this is a simple override. So let's have a look at the, the header option. So the header we're going to call, uh, let's just say the uh, bookstore again, oh, admin, the bookstore admin. So let's go back in and see what happens there. And you can see that that now has changed the bookstore admin. And let's just log out and log in again. And you can also see it now says the bookstore admin on login. So the final option here 
uh, the admin site site title. So let's have a look at this one. So I'm just going to call this a uh, site title bookstore. So we can see that it has been changed. Let's go back and refresh and just log in. So it isn't exactly too obvious um, at this point what has been changed. But if you go back to the top here, it now says, you can see it says the bookstore and then slash site title bookstore. So that's essentially where we've made the last change there in the site title. So there we go, the first tutorial in this series that just starts us off, uh, gets the ball rolling in this series. So in the next tutorial, we start to look at setting up your own admin site with custom behaviors. Because at the moment, this is the default admin. It's got all the default settings and so on. But what we want to do now is potentially create different admin areas for different applications. So for example, here you can see we have the bookstore and blog. And maybe you want different people to administrate different sections of your website or your application. So potentially we can set up different admin areas for different applications that you have within your application, in your Django application. So that's something that we're going to look at next. I just want to finish off by saying this tutorial is meant to be a throwaway tutorial. So the idea is that when Django updates, when things change, uh, you let me know, I change it or I make additions to this. If you've got something that you think would be useful to add to this, I'll definitely add it, recreate the tutorial, and then we can keep progressing and making these tutorials much more effective, useful, and feature rich. So thank you very much for listening and I'll see you in the next tutorial.